Theresa May has found herself with three months to conclude the Brexit withdrawal agreement with her European Union counterparts. With fears of a no-deal scenario growing, the Prime Minister has to pick her next move wisely to secure the best deal possible for the UK. Since the resignation of former Brexit Secretary David Davis, the Prime Minister has appointed Dominic Robb in his place and assumed the role of Britain's chief negotiator in the build-up to the perceived October deadline. As it stands, the withdrawal agreement, which includes the transition period, Brexit bill and the Irish backstop, is around 80% complete. Negotiators from both sides will resume talks after a brief summer sabbatical on the 16th of August. It remains highly unlikely that the agreement will be completed in the next round of negotiations, according to an EU official. So, Mrs May now has a number of strategies she can rely on in order to avoid the no-deal scenario, the most undesirable method, on either side of the channel, for avoiding a no-deal but one that remains on the table after Austrian Chancellor Sebastian Kurz hinted that an extension could be used to avoid a hard Brexit. At a Vienna press conference the young leader was questioned about the final stages of the negotiations. He told reporters in Vienna he would be in favor of pursing negotiations rather than a hard Brexit if no agreement is found in time to avoid a hard border in Ireland. He added, our goal is we reach an agreement with the UK but if that's not possible we have to avoid a hard Brexit. Our goal is clear. If not, it's good to enough negotiations. We will see. As the current holder of the EU's rotating presidency, it is down to Austria to recommend to member states the possible course of action. All 28 member states would also have to back the extension. However, Brussels insiders believe the move could create a wave of populist revolt across the continent. Anti-EU candidates at the next European parliamentary elections in May 2019 would have the ability to campaign on a ticket claiming Britain had voted to leave but wasn't allowed. According to one senior official, does Brussels really want a parliament full of Nigel Farage's they asked. The US president, known for his book The Art of the Deal, secured a victory from EU Commission President Jean-Claude Juncker after a recent round of trade talks in Washington. Brussels' most senior official left the White House having promising on behalf of European businesses to increase their orders of American soybeans. All this was done to avoid the threat of trade tariffs being imposed on European motor vehicle exports to the US. The deployment of such a strong tactic was lauded by former UKIP Nigel Farage, an associate of the US president. Mr Farage said, Trump has achieved more in one day of trade negotiations with the EU than May has in two years. If only we had a leader, not an appeaser. If I have learned one thing from nearly 20 years in Brussels, it is that the bully boys of the EU Commission only respect one thing, brute force. The truth of it is, the protectionist EU has now been forced by Trump into taking an approach that is more towards free trade and fair trade. Britain would be able to secure a £80 billion Brexit victory if it was to walk away without a deal and trade with the EU on WTO terms instead. According to evidence from leading economists which shows that the best deal for the UK could be a world trade deal with no trade deal with the EU. The UK gets to keep its £39 billion divorce bill and deregulation and controlling immigration could boost treasury coffers by £80 billion a year. According to Economists for Free Trade led by Professor Patrick Minford, the organization also revealed how countries on WTO terms do three times better in trade than member states of the EU locked in Brussels red tape. Another paper by Professor Minford, an advisor to Margaret Thatcher, and economist Yong Deng Su shows that a breakdown of talks would be positive for the UK to the tune of a one-off gain of £38 billion on the EU budget plus £180 billion from bringing forward the non-budgetary Brexit gains, plus £433 billion from EU tariff revenue, so £651 billion in all. They also note, for the EU it would mean a one-off loss of £38 billion in financial settlement, plus another one-off loss of £36 billion in terms of trade gain, plus the £433 billion from paying the UK its tariff revenue. The threat of no deal has become one of the strongest weapons in both the EU and UK's Brexit negotiation arsenal. According to predictions from either side, failing to conclude a withdrawal deal could be catastrophic. New Foreign Secretary Jeremy Hunt pointed out the potential damage to the continent when on a diplomatic mission to as part of Mrs May's bid to win a number of concessions from European heads of state. Mr Hunt said, 
The probability of no deal is increasing by the day until we see a change of approach from the European Commission, who have this view that they just need to wait and Britain will blink. France and Germany have to send a strong signal to the Commission that we need to negotiate a pragmatic and sensible outcome that protects jobs on both sides of the channel, because for every job lost in the UK, there will be jobs lost in Europe as well if Brexit goes wrong. And, after meeting German counterpart Heiko Maas, Mr Hunt said, Without a real change in approach from the EU negotiators we do now face a real risk of a no deal by accident, and that would be incredibly challenging economically. Britain would find that challenging, but in the end we would find a way not just to survive but to thrive economically. But my real concern is that it will change British public attitudes to Europe for a generation, while one of the riskier tactics, a game of chicken could ultimately decide whether one side profits or not. The EU's chief negotiator has the support of the remaining EU27 to conduct talks alongside their Brexit wish list, which was adopted into a formal negotiating position in March. The Prime Minister has already started in her bid to soften the EU's guidelines by paying visits to the bloc's most influential leaders. This summer, Mrs May has visited Sebastian Kurz, Emmanuel Macron and Angela Merkel as she tries to sideline Mr Barnier from his duties. One EU diplomat suggested there is room for compromise amongst leaders who are keen to avoid a no-deal. Mrs Merkel has reportedly already expressed her willingness to change her tact on Brexit in private. French President Mr Macron was largely unimpressed by Mrs May's sales pitch at their meeting last Friday. An Elysee Palace source denied that France was the main obstacle, telling Le Monde, the absence of an agreement on the withdrawal is not a scenario that we, as our partners, wish. Despite this, the source said there would be no official announcement or agreement from the meeting, and that Brussels was still making the key decisions. A British official concurred, saying, there will be no declaration afterwards. It's just a routine working get-together. It may have not returned instant results. But, if Mrs May is willing to politicize the negotiations she may be able to convince.